On a Thursday, investors called and featured a lot of positive vibes around the recent Peacock deal. WWE reported a record year of revenue, despite a large year-over-year drop in the fourth quarter that showed how important the Saudi Arabia deal is for them. 2020 revenue finished at a company record $974.2 million, up from 2019's $960.4 million, an increase of 1%. Operating income, massive jump from $116 million in 2019 to $208.6 million in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. Remember when they cut all those folks? In the spring, because we were in the middle of a pandemic and we needed to save some money. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much it would have cost to retain all of those people? It would have been a drop in the bucket, like a few million dollars. From $116.5 million to $208.6 million in operating income. Of course, fourth quarter's note was down because they didn't have the Saudi deal. Revenue dropped to 238.2 million from 2019's 322.8 million. So that by the way should tell you how much money they get to run a show in Saudi Arabia. For those of you wondering, why do they go to Saudi Arabia after all? Well, that's why. They dropped from 322.8 million to 238 million. On a year where, outside of that quarter, their revenue was up substantially in every single other quarter. Vince McMahon was there, spoke briefly at the onset. Nick Khan, Stephanie McMahon, Christina Salen. I mention that because Vince McMahon's brother passed away. And so Vince McMahon missed the following SmackDown. He missed the following Raw. I think he missed some other shows as well. So some people had... They believed that he wasn't on this call. They were like, oh my God, something's going on. Well, he was on the call. But the way that the call, I guess the opening moments may have been cut off on our site, maybe other places as well. But Vince McMahon was on the call yesterday, so that is that. And they talked, obviously, about Peacock and everything like that. And then a couple of other notes. Network subscribers, they were up to 1.5 million. Of course, that's worldwide, so we're still at around a million in the U.S. So if you're wondering... We were talking about the how much Peacock is paying per each of you listening right now. It's still about $1,100 for each one of you listening right now. So just think about that. I wish you would value me that much. They are planning to restart work. Well, they don't value you, Mike. They're not giving you that $1,100. They're hey, paying WWE for you. You get nothing, bro. Hey, ex- hey, I, I, I say 5 bucks, though, I guess, with the Xfinity hookup here with Peacock and whatnot. They are planning to restart work. On the new WWE offices in the second half of 2020. Thank God. I mean, I was very worried about that. <laughs> They've worked at a deal with a major sports league to do championship belts with team logos. Oh, no. So, I mean, this is actually, it's a its a brilliant idea. They give a bunch of belts to all the players. The belts get all over TV. And then all of these allegedly poor WWE fans that Peacock is paying $1,100 each Whoa. for with the idea that you know, if we offer for $5, these poor fans that can't afford $10 will pay $5. Not understanding that these allegedly poor fans are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for belts on a regular basis at WWE.com. Hey, say it correctly. They're going to get very upset with you. Their titles. They're not They're belts. They're belts. Remember? On this show, at least. Pal. Event revenue down 97%. Well, I wonder why. (laughs) But you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Their event revenue was down 97%. But because their house shows were drawing so poorly, by not running house shows, they made significantly more money. (laughs) I don't know if talent did with merch then in that case, though. That's the problem there. Well, they don't care about the talent, obviously. I I know. I I mean that in the nicest way possible. I mean, they care to a degree, but... You know, if you're if you're a talent making a lot less money, but they're making a lot more money by not running shows, that's the big thing to talk about. Well, that's okay. They can make it up on, you know, uh, oh, wait, they can't make it up in any fashion anymore, can they? Khan said, in terms of content partner satisfaction, they go by the three R's. Revenue, relevancy, and ratings. Wow. Rats well, they have interesting them. ways to... Uh, describe how these things are all positives, despite the fact that many of these metrics are declining 
<laughs> like the 25% year-over-year drop for Raw. By the way, their stock is declining today, believe it or not, with all this news. It's actually down 12%, which is uh, $6.74 as it stands right now. So, no, yeah, there you go. Well, those are the numbers. So, hey, if you, if you, well, it is what it is. They provide content. Mm. So, if you're a wrestling fan and you want professional wrestling booking, too bad. It's all about just content. We're going to get three hours on Monday and we're going to get two hours on Friday, and we're going to get two hours on Wednesday. They're going to provide content, and then they're going to provide these network archives and network shows to Peacock. They're providing content, and whether or not you like it or not is irrelevant. That's the story of these. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.